Isaiah, tell us about your night. Uh, it was very eventful. You had a nice little flood, like six inches of water. Uh, it started flooding at about 1 a.m. I was up to like five trying to move stuff. It's going to be a tough little practice today. A little exhausted. Was it the dorm? I mean, yeah, it was. An, pipe yeah, um, I, they said something about it was too cold and the pipe just burst and it flooded uh, my room and uh, Justin Martin and Dee Davis's room also. And then the whole hallways on both floors and it seeped down from the, from the fourth to the first floor. So it was a great night. Where did you sleep? In the locker room on the, on the couch. Uh, I think Coach Mack's going to give me a little bit of slack for the night I've been through, I'd hope. Uh, I'm about to go get a massage right after this because my, my back hurts. How many of the smaller ones? Uh, or, I mean, you, it was. Did you actually fit on the couch? Uh, no. Legs hanging over, dangling? <laughs> yep, that's how it went. How many of you guys were in there? Um, it was just me and uh, Remy Abel. Uh, I, I think D and J Mark got a, got they set something up for him, but they didn't have enough spots to set it up for everybody or something. So, yeah. When, where will you go from here? I mean, I'm assuming your room's still under. That is the question. <laughs> That's the question we're all asking. Where do we go? Because uh, when our room flooded in the summertime, it took them a month and a half to finish. So they moved us into uh, Brockman. Um, so I have no clue what's going on right now. Tom Eisen has a couple of rooms available at his house. I know that. I don't mind watching the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Is your stuff okay? Your uh, some stuff got damaged, but um, that's what you would expect in the flood, I guess. I didn't even know it was a flood. The fire alarm went off, and we thought it was a fire or something. You walk outside, and we were standing outside for like an hour or longer, and then they finally told us it was a flood, and then they st still weren't really trying to let us go back in, in to save our stuff, but I went in anyway, have to have to try to rescue some of my stuff. So the guys that were displaced were you and Remy, there were four of you, or? Uh, me, Remy, uh, Matt Stainbrook, uh, D. Davis, and Justin Martin, five of us. That's a great way to head into the next game. Yeah, lovely. I was so, I'm just happy that it, that game day isn't today. That would have been a rough one. What about you, Miles? Everything okay? Oh, my room is fine. I'm good. But um, Jalen and Jane's room also got flooded too. I hate him. Before. <laughs> <laughs> For the record. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I didn't get hit with the with the drastic uh, water that everybody else got hit with. But um, Jalen and James' room got messed up pretty bad. So, I mean, that's just to add on six players. You know, uh, half of the team had to deal, had to have a long, tough night and figure out what's going on with them. But, I mean, anybody's welcome to sleep in my room. You know, I'm cool with that. You know? Isaiah? Yeah, if he wants to. You know, I'm, I'm a good teammate. I'll share. I'm fine Great with that. teammate. <laughs> Well, um, starting off with the St. John's game, I think we were kind of timid, uh, not, you know, still in awe that we were in the Big East, but we figured it out later in that game. And I feel like um, from that game forward, you know, we kind of just approach every game as we did before the Big East started. Uh, you know, there's no reason for us to treat it any differently because when you try to treat things differently, uh, reverting back to the Bahamas when we try to, like, you know, oh, we're going against Iowa. And, uh, and you know, when you're in awe of something, you just don't play at your best. So right now we're just focused on, on us and doing things that we know we can do the way we can do it to the best of our abilities as a team. Um, I would definitely say uh, my approach changed. I just uh, needed to be more aggressive for the team. You know, they're always telling me to go attack and score. Uh, it's the thing I love about this team. Nobody's selfish. Everybody cheers for one another. If you score, if you mess up, you know, uh, before the Bahamas, you might 
look at him and say something to him. Now it's more of an encouragement, which is why I feel like we are on our streak. Uh, for me personally, after the Alabama game, you know, my family was down there to watch me. Uh, they drove about eight hours. My dad drove about three from Georgia. And, uh, you know, he got to talk to me before the game, and he was <clears throat> disappointed in the way I had been playing previously because he knows, you know, my abilities uh, and he knows how how I can play the game and affect the game. And after, you know, after he talked to me, I, since then I've just been more aggressive, making sure that I'm doing everything that I can to help this team be successful. What kind of challenges does uh, Devontae Gardner pose to you guys? Uh, six eight two ninety. Um, I'm gonna do my best when I'm on him. Uh, he's he's a, he's a beast around the around the basket. Um, the main thing that we really talked about is uh, trying to push him off the block, so he has to do more of a face up game or back you down from further, so we can get uh, you know, so we can get a little bit more help from the guards because he is he is a grown man. Uh, so I hope Matt just has to stick him because. Uh, He's a he's about sixty pounds heavier than I am. It's gonna be kinda tough. When you guys are playing in a conference like the A ten, you'll play teams two, three times a year, get to know their players. Is this a little different being in the big East playing teams you don't know more like maybe some non conference teams? Um I mean, it, it's different, but I mean every every game's gonna be a challenge if you know the team or not, because they can always put in different plays, do different things. So, uh, you know, we really don't look at it and, you know, knowing a team better because we've played them before, it really doesn't matter. We try to approach every game the same because, I mean, everybody switches things up. You think you know Xavier and then next thing you know, next game we do something different and it's like, oh, they didn't do this last time. Every team is going to have a counter. Isaiah, when you look at Marquette, they are not a great shooting team. They really struggled everywhere from their free throw line to the perimeter. So when you look at that, you know, you guys always hang your hat on your defense, but how important is it to get a really good defensive start against this team? It's really important, especially for our bigs, because they like to work inside out. Uh, we, just need, we just need to play the way that we've been playing the last couple games on the defensive end. Um, Getting stops and getting out in transition, so they can't set up their defense because I, I know they're on the defensive rating. I think they're like number 25 or 26 in the country, so it's not going to be easy for us to score. So the easiest way to score is for us to get a stop and go in transition and, and get a basket before they can set their defense up. Miles, where do you think you are right now? You know, as a, as a player in the midst of your first season here, compared to where you were maybe at the very beginning, game one. <clears throat> um, right now, I'm obviously going through a cold streak right now. And I, it's nothing I should be worried about. You know, it happens to the best of the best. The the great thing about this team is that we all pick each other up. You know, my maybe me shooting 0 for 8 for the last three games, you wouldn't pay attention to that because we're still playing very well. You know, and as an individual, I don't let that affect me and I don't let that affect the team. We go into every game with a different approach and every approach is to win the game. The great thing, also great thing, is the coaching staff, when it comes to scouting and and, and getting the other team's information, they're, they're probably one of the best uh, that I've ever been around because you know every game you feel like you you've played against them you feel like you've seen so much of them even when you don't want to we're still watching them you know that and that and that's the good part about it and um, <clears throat> right now I, I feel like we're we're in a good place me individually I feel like I am too you know I'm every game I'm gonna take every game new I don't I don't look at oh, I'm shooting bad or I'm playing bad you know it's just it's a new game I, I'm just trying to do whatever I can to help my team out. What about defensively? Is the game slowing down for you a little bit? I mean, uh, I feel like you're getting better in that regard. Defensively, I, I feel like I'm getting better. You know, I'm starting to get the system more. You know, I'm starting to uh, not let uh, defenders beat me off to dribble as much. I'm playing more and helping the gaps, and 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 you know, it's it's working. You know, I'm picking up a couple steals, getting a couple transition uh, points, and, and you know, it's helping it's helping the team out a lot. You know, <clears throat> for me to be on the court and to produce not only on the offensive side but also on the defensive side. During your streak, the uh, balance on offense has really developed. Uh, can you just talk about how that has grown in the last several games? 
Um, like Isaiah said, uh, we're all being, uh, there's a, a lot of us are being more aggressive. You know, Samaj is starting to pick it up more. D, he's, he's picking it up. Uh, and the surprise, well, not the surprise, who we all knew should be playing like this is Justin Martin. You know, he's our, he's our X factor. He's, he's quietly the second, to me, like, he, you know, best, second best perimeter player on the team. You know, at 6'7", and can shoot the ball where he can shoot and be as athletic. He really, he really presents a, another threat when it comes to playing against teams. You know, instead of watching out for me to shoot, you got to also watch out for Justin shooting, driving, playing defense. I mean, we're we're all we're all getting together. And we're all playing a good group of basketball. Um, it's also good that uh, the younger players, uh, you know, we're starting to catch on with the older players. You know, it might be tough in practice because they're just they're just like a, you know they're, they're taking a lot of control and they, they they really do put a beating on us sometimes in practice. But the good thing about it is that we learn we're learning from it and they're they're teaching us even though they're killing us on, on some of the drills and stuff. They'll still be right there to to guide us through and then it just shows on the court how we all just get together and then we just we just play our group of Xavier basketball. I concur with that. Uh, you know, we just uh, we try to teach them. The best way to teach them is to beat them down. You know, and then then you tell them, then you give them some you give them some learning points. You know, that's the way I was taught, and I mean it helped me out by the time you know I got to my senior year. But uh, they're catching on just fine, starting to learn the system, being more aggressive, and having some kind of swagger. That's what we were missing last year was some swagger and. I feel like we finally got that back this year, which is another reason we're getting our wins. Uh, and, you know, this is more of a brotherhood, more of more, you know, I see him more as my brother than my teammate, which is also different from last year. We were close, but we're, we weren't as close as we are this year. Last, what did you do on your own last year when you couldn't participate in team activities? And how did you um, continue to stay sharp with your shot? <clears throat> um, definitely last year was tough, you know, also to try to still keep the love for the game, even though I couldn't even practice with the team. I couldn't watch them practice. I couldn't even go to Muskie Madness, you know, like it was really a tough year. But but I had guys like uh, Dante Jackson, you know, I, whenever I want to get shots up, I would get shots up or like Ben Botts when he was here. Like it, it, it's just like last year really showed how much I really loved the game. You know, it really, it really, it really tested me. You know, and I, I got challenged and and it, it helped out a lot because it helped me grow as a player and it helped me accept the fact that you know I'm taking a full year off from basketball and then coming on to this year and trying to contribute on a, a high D1 team. You know, it, it's a tough thing, but it's it's it gets better with the group of guys that we have. You know, it's easier. It's it, it, it's funner when you, you know, when, when guys, even though you're messing up so much, when guys want to come pick you up. So, like, even though sitting out last year was a tough thing for me, it did nothing but help me out and get closer with the, the, the players and, and everybody else now. Like Isaiah said, you know, we're, we're a brotherhood. You know, we all we all hang out together. We all do everything together. And, and you know, it, it's great to have a team that can just that can just gel, not on the court, but also off the court. I mean, Marquette is um, a relentless team. They play extremely hard on the defensive end. And all you have to do is just go down their schedule and look at the teams that they've lost to. And there aren't many teams in the country that would have uh, much better records than Marquette. So I, I don't pay that any attention when, it, when they say, hey, Marquette's having a down year. It's not a typical buzz team. Like that. That's <laughs> just wait till the end of the season. You won't be saying that. So um, we, we know what we're getting. We know the physicality we're in for. We know how hard they're going to play. Um, you know, and, and we have great respect. I mean, I, I remember playing against uh, or coaching against um, Devontae when he was a freshman. <laughs> he pushed us around then. You know, Tule as well. So um, you know. That's not even a thought in our mind. Can you talk about those guys specifically? Otule, this is, I think, his sixth year in the program, and Devontae was there when you guys played in the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. They're the only two guys that are still on either team from that year. Yeah. Um, you know, I just remember we, we had a tough, uh, a tough time scoring the basketball. And I just remember, um, you know, their physicality. Uh, you know, Gardner was, was only a freshman at the time, but he didn't have any issue. Um, with playing on both ends of the floor against Kenny Freeze. And, you know, Kenny was uh, a junior. He was, you know, seven feet, 270 pounds. And uh, Devontae, you know, I don't want to say didn't have a problem. Kenny played well. But, uh, you know, that's two big guys in there. How do you match up with him uh, in 
side there, in particular with uh, with Matt. Well, I think he'd be your main guy, but you know, one of your strengths has been. There hasn't been just one guy. Yeah, and, um, you know, we're going to need more than one guy. You know, they, they put fouls on their opponents. Um, you know, they pride themselves on the offensive end uh, of getting box touches, paint touches. Um, you know, I think their goal was 49. And, you know, you can see in everything that they run that they try to go inside first. They try to drive the ball. They try to post it. They try to offensive rebound it. You know, the more often you get the ball there, uh, the more good things happen, whether it's you get to the free throw line, uh, you get layups, and they, they know who they want to be. And again, uh, we're going to have to match that physicality, and it's not just Matt Stainbrook. You have a lot of options on offense this year. How much does that help when you're going against a good defensive team that you have? From well, let's hope it helps. Um, you know, we feel like um, we're a more balanced team than we've been the last few seasons. Uh, we, we have, you know, players that are, that are willing to make the extra pass. I think we have a good mentality right now on offense of, of being an attacking team in transition, but yet when we're in the half court, being able to play inside out. Um, and again, I, I don't look at our team and say, well, this is a, uh, a glaring weak spot on the offensive end. And if we can continue to get better and, and, and see those same results, then, then we're going to be a tough team to deal with. But, you know. Um, I'll leave it at that. Coach, comparing last year to this year, Isaiah just said in here that you guys have swagger back this year. What would you say to that? Um, I'd say, you know, we have more depth. Um, you know, again, it's easy to say you have swagger when you've won a few games in a row. You know, I'm, I'm more worried about consistency. I'm more worried about effort, um, you know, and, and toughness and being able to uh, put results in the rearview mirror, win or lose. And so, if if the youngins these days call it swagger, great. I just worry about our next opponent. How's Landon doing? Any closer to being better? Yeah, um, David Fluker wanted to give Landon this week off um, in terms of basketball activity, but he's been jumping rope. He's been riding a bike. You know, he's been doing um, you know sprint exercises. Uh, with David all week in hopes that we can have him back um, hopefully this weekend, which will make us a deeper, you know, deeper team. Heard some of your players obviously had, had some issues last night with their uh, dorm room. How have you had to deal with that? Um, you know, we've got a, I've got a great staff, and, and, you know, we're doing all we can uh, within the confines of the NCAA, but, uh, you know, that's – that's personal life. That's over here. It has nothing to do with basketball.